don't think there was anything else at the house. Let's go back to the school again. I'm going to try to see if I can find um, the information on the Braille. Okay. Suspects. Daryl works at his father's company. House said Jake was running late for a meeting with Daryl. Some Yahoo named Mitch Dillon wants me off the case. about Connie still. I don't think we're going to get anything oh, else out of you, Hal. Nancy. I'm really embarrassed to see you again. See you later. See you later, Nancy. I'm really embarrassed to see you, but I'll see you later. Let's go out this way. See if we can see Connie. Hey Nancy, need something? No. See you later. Adios. Adios. I don't think I need to get back in the other room for anything either though. Is this it? One. Hang on, this might be the answer to the braille that I need. So let's see here. It's like this. And then there's one, two, three down. but it's on the right side. Is there something with two down on the right side? Maybe I can call Ned and find out about the Braille. And call Mitch. Let's call Ned. Hi, Nancy. I mean, I know what the maintenance room means. I just don't know how to decipher what did the that. What the dots on the lock to the maintenance room mean? The map. They're braille notation. The encyclopedias in the library must have information on how to decipher them. Yeah. Bye, Ned. Bye, Nancy. Okay. But we had we had the uh, the photo of the braille. See, I was thinking it was was something like this. We had the two, we had three down, and we had like this one. I don't know. Um,
Here, this. So like, here's the letters. But I don't know what letters it's supposed to be. Maybe like Jake? But Jake didn't have anything to do with the, uh, the maintenance room. never did read this one, did I? You might be wondering why I'm even sending this, and I wish I had better explanation. So many times in the hallways, we catch each other's eyes, and it seems like we both want to say something, but we just keep walking. You with your friends and me alone. There's so much I want to say to you every time I drive to or from school. It's like you're in the car with me, and we have these amazing conversations. And I'm thinking, will this ever become true? Can you ever forgive me for what I did? Can I? I want to explain, but a part of me knows that it's not safe and stupid to do. Some, sometimes I just can't keep it bottled inside me and I want to scream it from the rooftops. Is this crazy? Am I? So that was Connie's note. Oh, maybe it's this here, maintenance room. Note. Okay. There we go. That's what I needed. So it's going to be... And let me take a picture of this on my phone so I can remember it. On my real life phone. Alright, so it's going to be... This looks super sketch. Oh boy. This is where we die. Wait, what's this one? I can't even look at it, I'm too close. I'll melt my phone. Scary. There's the matchbook I needed. Can I just get out now? Uh oh, somebody, somebody broke that. What am I gonna do? Um, well. I don't even have my phone anymore. This is, this is horrible news. What do I do? Toolbox. Gloves. Anything else? No. Oh. There's a, a little hatch there. Let me put my gloves on.
Too late. <laughs> oh no. Third degree burns. Yes, let's try again. And do I have to pick up everything again or do I still have it? Make sure. gloves. Okay. But I don't remember the... I don't know the, the passcode to this. Did that. This is a good time to do this, right? Can't check that off yet. Let's save. As a boiler. I don't know what the, I don't know what the, the passcode to this is. That's what I need. Just forget the whole thing. Just Ouch, too hot. Too hot. Let's get the gloves back on. Ouch, too Ouch, too hot. But I have Ouch, my special gloves hot. on. Ouch, too hot. Ouch, too hot. Um Okay. One more on this one. Oh, almost had it. All right, I think I know what to do now though. All right, let me make sure I still have all my stuff. Nope, I specifically saved just for that reason. Okay, gloves. Bolt cutters and gloves. And that one's good. And then this one needs to come down a little bit. Why is it locked? good where it is. Why can't I do this one? I don't understand. I, do, I don't... I thought I knew what to do here. I thought I knew what to do. I mean, the bad thing is I can't even look at my phone to uh, get any information here. No, oh, let's get out of here. I gotta get the gloves first anyway. I don't need to worry about the matchbook until I get the gloves. And I can't take any of this. All right. 
Um, let's do the padlock. The school was built in, it said 1969? No? Okay, well, okay. So then the gloves. But why can't I still not do this? I, I don't know. Either way, I'm still stuck here. Why, why can I not pull these? I, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, see, it, yeah, that's not gonna do me any good. To reach. I know. I don't know. I don't know why it's not letting me pull the other. Pull the other levers. Maybe we have to. Maybe we have to alternate. one. Why? Okay, so it's like this. Yeah, you just had to alternate them. That was very confusing. All right, let me pick this up. And... Let's see if we can figure out how to get out of here. Bolt cutters? was something over here. The flames were too hot to reach. What was it? Nothing? I should look around first before I leave. Videotape. There we go. All right, we're out of the school. So this is where we want to go. Let's put this back. This is where we want to go watch the videotape now. I don't remember which room it was in. In here? Let's pull this out. Let's see. Mm. Oh. Huh. Jake's just full of trouble, isn't he? I need 
something to make this work. All right, we did Jack. that. Still have to do that. Haven't done that. Did I lose the uh, the matchbook? Or did I not pick it up this time? I mean, I don't want to go back down there. But we may have the two. Was there anything in here? We may have to go back down into the uh, boiler room again. Because I don't think I picked up the matchbook that last time. My bad. Okay, I did pick it up. Well, all right. Still broken. Still broken. All right, well, let's go to the library then. Wait, we had to search the catalog for something from Jake. What was it? I don't remember. I really don't remember what it was. Uh, let me go... I go back over and look again. Search under my combo in the catalog. Your combo is was just Jake, it was five. Two, five, three. Okay. Jake Rogers under my seat. Reference, okay. Under my seat. Can I come back here? It says to search under his seat. Fiction. We can, I mean, I guess we can kind of go upstairs here. Not seeing anything there. Quarter. There we go. And on the matchbook, it was this one. Wait. Done. 
again. Okay. Still have to do that. Did that. Okay, so I just have to figure out the... The symbols, maybe? Let's look at the uh, table of elements here. I don't even know what it's supposed to start with, though. The elements tell the order. The letter and digit tell the direction. Answer to my fate lies in the box. Okay. The problem is I don't know where to start there. Yeah, I got that. be any I mean obviously it has to be a particular order Congratulations on your purchase of the state-of-the-art Dynaham Model 2000. We at Kramer Com, uh, you will enjoy your new communication device for years and years. Below are some helpful pieces of information for both your safety and convenience. And remember, if it's if it isn't Kramer Com, it's asymptotic. <laughs> Wonderful world of ham radio. Your new Dynaham Model 2000 lets you listen in on parts of the world you never knew existed and interact with friends from faraway lands. The Space Age digital keypad allows you to enter for digital frequency or channel. You can then either listen to the activity on the channel or use the Dynaham Morse code keyword to transmit a message. Please consult local, state, federal, and international laws on appropriate and legal usage. Receiving. To enter a frequency or channel number, simply enter a four-digit number on the numeric keypad and press the connect button. Transmitting all messages are sent using Morse code. See appendix one letter at a time. Compose each letter by pressing either a dot or a dash button on the Morse code keyboard. When you finish composing a letter, press send. The less than button erases the series of dots and dashes that have been entered prior to hitting the send button. If you realize you have made a mistake after hitting the send button one or more times, pushing the less than less than button, rewind button will send and ignore previous message signal. If you have transmitted an unrecognizable letter, a transmission error sound will play. Good maintenance techniques will extend the life of your Dynaham 2000 model. Avoid exposure to liquid solvents, bodily fluids, and caustic chemicals. If the main radio tube has expired, it can be replaced with any standard radio tube. Caution. Avoid placing fingers or foreign objects into the main radio tube holding socket. Electrical shock can result. Oh, let's take a picture of this just in case. Alright, so there's the alphabet, and it looks like that's it. Okay. Can I not go back here and read any of these books? 
No, f no works of fiction for me. There we go. I don't think we read anything on this side, did we? Maybe we did. We did not. Werewolves. Since ancient times, the cunning savagery of wolves has both terrified and awed the humans with whom they came into contact. In Europe, where wolves were a constant threat to livestock and allegedly to small children and lone travelers, legends as to their evil viciousness became widespread. Predictably, one of these legends involved humans who could transform themselves into wolves. These creatures were called werewolves, where means man, and the transformation came to be known as lycanthropy. What the symptoms of lycanthropy? Lycanthropy? Descriptions of werewolves and of the transformation process itself have varied greatly throughout the ages. Some lycanthropes assumed the precise appearance of a wolf Others turned into something that was half human, half beast. Sometimes the change was permanent. Sometimes lycanthropes could change form at will. Sometimes environmental factors brought about the transformation. The symptoms and duration of a werewolf's condition depended entirely upon the curse that initiated that particular case of lycanthropy. In general, victims who were destined to alter their form permanently usually appeared pale. Fatigue was a frequent complaint, as well as weak vision, a dry tongue, and constant thirst. These symptoms usually accompanied or were soon followed by hair growth, especially on the face and hands, fingernails grew long, and the eyes gradually changed shape and color. Now we just turned into a graphic novel. The victim's personality also changed. He or she became increasingly ill-tempered and aggressive. As the transformation grew more apparent, the victim usually went into hiding, returning to society only to satisfy its newfound appetite for human flesh. For temporary victims who could change their appearance at will or who were involuntarily transformed by the sound of a wolf's nocturnal howl or by a full moon, like in Anthropic symptoms occurred not over time, but quickly, almost instantaneously. They were forced to assume human form again at sunrise, either by shedding their hair, claws, and fangs, or by taking off their skin and hiding it intact. Such a lycanthrope would reportedly suffer the same fate as its shed skin. If it was found and destroyed, the werewolf would likewise be destroyed. According to legend, those who voluntarily became werewolves obtained the ability to change their form through sorcery, and voluntary lycanthropes were people who had been cursed by someone they had wronged or had been bitten by or born to a werewolf. Since there was no cure, and since most werewolves were thought to be immortal, these unfortunate beings were compelled to lead dark, desperate lives until they were felled by a fatal wound to the brain or heart that they could only be destroyed by a silver bullet is a modern embellishment. Why? The, the reasons for lycanthropy. Psychology plays a significant role in lycanthropy. Wanting to imitate, if not actually become, the thing or person that one fears the most seems to be part of human nature. Far from being a universal phenomenon, werewolves are unknown in regions where there are no wolves. Instead, people spread tales of were bears or were tigers or were crocodiles, whichever animal is most feared. The old saying, if you can't beat them, join them, goes a long way in explaining the source and longevity of many monster legends. More important, throughout history, there have been instances of people who actually were werewolves, in their own minds at least, convinced that they had been cursed. They presented all the physical symptoms of lycanthropy and often behaved violently because they fully believed that they had become werewolves, they acted like werewolves. As a result, the people around them treated them like werewolves, which only reinforced their delusion, thus trapping them in a vicious circle. The psychological disorder was no doubt prevalent in the Middle Ages, when belief in sorcery, curses, and creatures such as werewolves was commonplace. The power of suggestion cannot be underestimated, especially in places where education is minimal and superstition passes for truth. 
Instances of lycanthropic disorder are rare in modern times, although it is possible that many cases go unreported due to misdiagnosis or famili familial embarrassment. For research psychologists such as myself, information gathering is a never-ending process. If you believe you know someone who has undergone lycanthropic metamorphosis, please contact me. Okay, that was something. Anything else in here we can read? I love going to the library. It's one of my favorite places. What is a relic? Throughout the ages, the remains and intimate possessions of religious figures have been recovered, preserved, and venerated by their followers. Such items, known as relics, are particularly important in Catholicism. After Constantine facilitated the embellishment of Christianity as the predominant religion of the Roman Empire in AD 312, consecrating new churches by securing and sometimes displaying the relics of saints became standard practice. Over the centuries, as cathedrals and basilicas were built and rebuilt across Europe, the relics associated with them often dictated their political as well as spiritual importance. Relic relics were kept in a cavity inside the altar sepulcher of a church or in a container reliquary, or more often were simply buried so they would become literally and figuratively part of the church's foundation. Often a relic consisted of partial remains, sometimes a single finger or a lock of hair. Sometimes it was an item a saint had habitually worn or touched, clothes, jewelry, even dishware. It was, and still is, not uncommon for the relics of a single saint to be in several different churches on several different continents. The bodies of some saints seemed miraculously immune to decomposition. These incorruptibles can still be seen in churches throughout Europe, lying in state in glass sepulchers. Their natural appearance belying the fact that they died centuries earlier. What follows is a survey of the relics that can be found in modern-day day Venice. About some of them, much is known. About most of them, little is known. The history of many of them is a frustrating mishmash of fact and fancy. But none of the relics ended up where they are by accident. Someone, sometime, believed they were sacred and went to great lengths to preserve them against the unrelenting onslaught of time and human forgetfulness. The Relics of St. Mark Not surprisingly, the remains of St. Mark the Evangelist are buried in St. Mark's Basilica. Famous for writing the earliest of the four Gospels of the New Testament, Mark spread the Gospel as well, traveling great distances to preach eventually founding a church in Alexandria, Egypt. When he died, his remains were enshrined at the church he had founded. The city of Venice at that time did not exist. But by 828, Venice not only existed, it was looking for a way to demonstrate its independence from both Rome and Byzantium, and to be recognized as the major commercial and cultural center, center it was well on its way to becoming. Consequently, a group of Venetian merchants obtained the body of St. Mark moving, translating it from Alexandria to the chapel of the Doge, the secular ruler of Venice. Some accounts say the merchants purchased the remains, but it's far more likely they stole them. The city rationalized its actions by recounting a story in which St. Mark, while sailing to a town nearby, was forced to wait out a storm in the lagoon, which would later give rise to Venice. An angel reportedly appeared to him and said, be at peace here, as in, don't be afraid of the storm. The Venetians, however, claimed the angel meant rest here, as in, be buried and rest eternally here. In honor of his city's new patron saint, the Doge rebuilt and expanded his chapel, which eventually became the Grand Basilica it is today, and the city of Venice basked in its newfound status as the guardian and protector of one of the greatest figures in the history of Christianity, the relics of St. Theodore. Two tall columns built in the 12th century flank the Piazzetta of the Piazza San Marco. Atop one is a winged lion, symbol of St. Mark the Evangelist. Atop the other is a man standing on a crocodile symbol of Egypt. This is St. Theodore of Am Amasia, the original patron saint of Venice. As Christianity spread throughout Europe, 
in the Middle East following the Edict of Constantine, it was common for cities to obtain the relics of a particular saint, then dedicate the city to their protection. In return, that saint would guard the city. For their patron saint, the, the Byzantine officials who founded Venice chose St. Theodore, a young soldier who was martyred for his Christian beliefs in 83 or 6, in Amasya, a city in what is now Turkey. By the 9th century, however, Venetian officials considered Theodore to be an Eastern saint, one more closely associated with Byzantium than Rome and lacking in star power. So when St. Mark's relics were translated to Venice in 828, the relics of St. Theodore were quietly removed from the Doge's chapel and forgotten. His body is said to have been translated to the church, which bears his name in Constantinople, while his head is in Gaeta, Italy. But it is unclear whether these are the same relics that were once enshrined in Venice. The chalice of St. Gervais? Gervais? <laughs> Gervais and his twin brother, Protes, were the sons of two Christian martyrs in Milan. They too were martyred for their faith, probably when Marcus Aurelius was the Roman emperor. 161 to 180. Little else is known about their lives. It is... It is the way in which their relics were discovered that made them truly remarkable. In 386, St. Ambrose needed relics in order to consecrate his new basilica in Milan. Heeding what he had seen in a dream, he started digging in a cemetery outside, outside the city and there found the remains of St. Gervais and St. Protes. The relics were moved to his basilica and buried there, and the twins became the patron became the patron saints of Milan, but the story wasn't over. In the grave with St. Gervais was the cup he and his brother had presumably shared while growing up. Undoubtedly placed in the grave by a friend or relative, the cup was quite plain, most likely made of tin, with the letter P awkwardly scratched into the metal on one side and the letter G on the other. At least that's what the cup looked like when it was removed from the grave. Legend has it, that upon exposure to the sun, the cup was miraculously transformed into a majestic, solid gold, jewel-encrusted chalice. The twins' initials were still on it, only now they were precisely drawn patterns of gleaming, precious stones. There is no record that the chalice of St. Gervais was ever placed on display in the Basilica St. Ambrosio in Milan, which means it was either given away or more likely stolen soon after its discovery. More than a thousand years later, the chalice surfaced in, in, in Assisi when it was used to pay off a debt. It eventually fell into the hands of a priest who realized what it was and in 1708 presented it to the covenant of St. Gervais in Venice. For 300 years, the nuns there have watched over their beloved relic while the convent is closed to the public. It's possible, though extremely difficult, for people who have a who have a demonstrable interest in art or history to arrange for a private viewing of the chalice. All right, let's go up to the next one. Next level. Top shelf this time. Whoa. <laughs> Introduction to Ichido. Ichido is an ancient, extremely simple yet highly effective form of hand-to-hand -hand combat, although it is in truth nothing more than a repertoire of nine distinct, precisely delivered offensive blows. Ichido can, when executed by a master, vanquish a foe in seconds. Ichido has never enjoyed great popularity, largely because the Ichi practitioner is required to proceed each move with a specific verbal salute or chi cry. Once an adversary learns which chi cry precedes what blow, he of course can respond to each chi cry with the appropriate block and thus defend himself indefinitely. Nevertheless, nevertheless, Ichido is still learned and practiced with great enthusiasm by people with a passion for power and a taste for novelty. Attack stance. Hands forward, raise to chest level, fists clench. Always return to this position after delivering a blow. Up left attack. A reigning open hand chop striking the opponent's upper left side. Chi cry. Hussa. Up right attack. 
a reigning open hand chop striking the opponent's upper right side. Chi cry. <laughs> okay. Up center attack. Arm and wrist are bent like a flamingo, with fingers forming a point or beak. The attack is a quick jab or poke to the face. Chi cry. Essa, essa. Mid left attack. Left side close fist punch. Knuckles are up. Eka. Mid right attack. Right side close fist punch. Knuckles are up. <laughs> Mid center attack. Open handed palm attack to the chest. Shira. Low left attack. Lower left closed fist kidney punch. Knuckles are turned down. Kila. Low right attack. Lower right, closed fist, kidney punch. Knuckles are turned down. Shaza! Low center attack. Signature attack. Both arms are pulled back and then open hand palm strike with both hands to the opponent's stomach. Shita! <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I need to try that tomorrow. Don't know who I'm going to try it on, but I'm going to find somebody. Gemstones and how to identify them by Rexford Millhouse. Gemstones include any number of crystalline rocks, which when cut and polished can be used as jewelry. Their commercial value usually depends on how rare they are, although beauty is certainly a factor as well. Because gemstones are, more often than not, found by accident, it behooves miners, prospectors, and even farmers to be able to recognize them, for the earth holds many natural treasures, but only for those who know what to look for. This is very hard to read. Quartz is one of the most abundant minerals on earth. Crystalline quartz is a composite of six-sided prisms which have grown together in a process called twinning. Sometimes the crystals grow at right angles to each other, but soar. But more frequently, two crystals grow from a common prism face or several crystals grow into each other so that the corner of one penetrates the other, penetrates the face of another. Amethyst is crystalline quartz that is a lilac to deep purple in color. The deeper the color, the more valuable it is. Citrine, a form of quartz that is a rich golden color. It's closer, closely related to amethyst. In fact, if amethyst is heated to five, 550 degrees centigrade, it becomes citrine. For the heat, eliminates the impurity that causes its purple coloration. Tiger's eye is a fibrous type of crystalline quartz in which thin yellowish and reddish brown bands are apparent when light reflects off its polished surface. Diamond is pure carbon and is formed deep in the mantle or the of the earth where extreme temperatures more than a thousand degrees centigrade and extreme pressure 50,000 times greater than on the earth's surface make its crystal extremely compact and strongly bonded hence diamonds well-known hardness due to their hardness low quality diamonds may have many industrial uses such as for grinding wheels and drill bits magna brings diamond crystals to the earth's surface along with other rocks from the mantle these kimberlite pipes often contain olivine peridot garnet and zircon as well as diamond this is very difficult to read <laughs> it's it's not very clear at all when gem hunters spot any of the indicator minerals pictured below they would do well to search the surrounding area for diamond crystals tourmaline comes in so many colors that it probably has at one time or another been confused with all the other stones in this book however Tourmaline crystals are deeply and distinctively striated, grooved, prismatic, and triangular in cross-section. The most common color is black, but some tour tourmaline crystals are multicolored, such as watermelon tourmaline, which is pink on the inside and green on the outside.
Beryl is a very diverse mineral with several gemstone varieties. Common beryl is an opaque milky green while its rare gem varieties are transparent. All varieties form long hexagonal prismatic crystals which are similar to tourmaline crystals but lack tourmaline's characteristic striations. Aqua Marine is the blue green to deep blue variety of beryl. While most gemstones form relatively small crystals, Aqua Marine has been known to form crystals weighing more than 100 pounds, although such specimens are rare. Jeez, 100 pounds. That's crazy. Emerald is a deep green variety of beryl which gets its color from trace amounts of chromium. Emerald gemstones tend to contain extraneous matter. Indeed, the source of a stone can sometimes be pinpointed by, ex by examining its impurities or inclusions. Garnet is a relatively common gemstone because garnets are oft often appear in their host rocks as almost perfectly faceted crystals. They have attracted human attention for centuries. Unlike other gemstones, garnet forms relatively spherical crystals that are generally reddish in color and look somewhat like pomegranate seeds. Pyrope garnet crystals are deep red. They form in the Earth's mantle and are brought to the Earth's surface in much the same way as diamond crystals. Therefore, finding pyrope increases the likelihood but doesn't guarantee that diamond can be found in the vicinity. Peridot is the most well-known form of olivine. It is bright apple green crystals. Its bright apple green crystals are thick and vertically striated with wedge-shaped terminations and an oily luster. Most peridot is found amid basaltic rocks which have been brought to the earth's surface by lava. Corundum or aluminum oxide is second in hardness only to a diamond and as a component of the black magnetic rock known as emery has been mined and used for thousands of years as an abrasive. Its crystals are commonly six-sided and barrel sh and barrel shaped with tapering ends and are when pure colorless. Rubies are one of the two gem varieties of corundum. Rubies are deep red and are formed when chromium substitutes for aluminum as corundum crystallizes. Rubies is my gemstone. I was born in July. Sapphires include all the other color variations of Gen Corundum and may be pink, yellow, green, blue, or colorless depending on which transitional elements such as iron and titanium influence the crystallization process. However, cornflower blue sapphires are by far the most sought after. Zircon that is gemstone quality rivals diamond in its beauty and brilliance, although not in hardness. Zircon crystals are typically prismatic with pyramidal ends and are usually found as single specimens. They may be suspended in rock or because they are dense and durable, small grain-like crystals are often found in beach placer deposits. Natural gemstones are usually reddish brown, but when subjected to heat, they turn yellow, colorless, or blue. Whew, that was a mouthful. Is that it? Oh, I want to read more. Oh, man. Can't go to the information desk. Hmm. Um, let me. Let me write all these down. Give me just a second here. I'm gonna write write all this stuff down. H E up to X E right three 
And that's it. Okay. So then, probably the order that we put them in in the puzzle is by the number. Two, three, four, five. So, AG is... non-existent. Here it is. 47. Alright, so give me a second to go through this now and put all of the numbers in here. 17. Okay, so I think I got it. So this one started here, then we go up two, right one, left three, one, two, three, down two, right one, down one, left two, No. Am I missing one? I'm missing one somewhere, aren't I? How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen with this one. You know what? Maybe we can just figure it out here. Um, so there's something between left two. So it either has to be up or it has to be over. We left two, and then down three, so... Here we go. One, two, three. Right four. One, two, three, four. Down one. Left one, two, three. Up two. One, two, three. Up two. Left one. Down two. One, two, three. There we go. All right, so then I just need to go back uh, and look at this video now. Check in here again. And this one. What you got, Jake? This is the story of a student council president gone terribly bad. Hmm. Let's take a look at what kind of homework he's bringing home from daddy's top secret military industrial aerospace factory. But what does Daryl do with this stuff? He's too stupid to really know what it all means. But he's not too stupid to know how much these industrial secrets are worth. Yeah. You see, Daryl's selling out to our local air conditioning guy, Mitch Dillon. 
Not sure what a guy specializing in HVAC does with satellite schematics, telemetry encodings, and signature intelligence, but I'm sure whatever it is, it's not exactly legal. But it's probably worth a lot of money to Mitch to keep it quiet. Breaking news, check it out. I found out who Mitch is selling Daryl's secrets to. Who? This dude. No way, imagine? Uncle Steve? This dorkoid is the ringleader of some kind of clearinghouse for military secrets. And Mr. Clueless just forgot his journal full of important notes like contact numbers, system passwords, project code names, amounts paid, etc., etc. And some other stuff I don't understand. But I can tell that this guy will pay top dollar to get it back. But just in case, should anything happen to me, I'm putting the journal in a safe place. I taped it underneath one of the book carts at the school, but I know oh. it'll give me much trouble. Just a ton of cash. So if you find this video, come look me up. I'll probably be long gone from Paseo del Mar and tanning my bod on my very own private island, retired at 17. Jake. Aunt Eloise? Uh -oh. Is that you? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, who is it? Nobody's here. Huh. Is Nancy Drew gonna jump scare me? <gasps> Detective yep. Beach, I didn't expect you. I just thought I'd come by and see how you're doing. You seemed kind of in a hurry. Did you find the journal? Yes, I found your journal. Oh. Huh. Uh, Jake's journal. I found Jake's journal. Nancy. No. You said my journal. You said that you found my journal. Oh. Why don't we step into the living room and have a nice chat about where my journal is, hmm? Oh, and why don't you give me your cell phone? I'd hate to be interrupted during our little tete-a-tete. -tete. <laughs> so, this Detective Beach, an undercover assignment, was just a ruse to get me to find your journal. You killed Jake, didn't you? Yes, I did con you into this undercover charade, and you just ate it up. I mean, you had the lingo, the self-important attitude. You're a real Snoopy Susie, aren't you? I but solved the case. as far as murder goes, no. Yeah. That was my former partner, Mitch Dillon. But stop with this delaying tactic, Detective Nancy. Where's my journal? Hmm... It's in the entrance, in the sofa, under the rose paintings. Let me in. Why me? Why did you choose me to go undercover? You fit the bill. You're a teenager, you're new in town, and you're an amateur detective. I overheard your aunt talking about you at the diner and came up with the whole undercover idea. It's not in here. <sighs> I'm going to give you another chance. Tell me where my journal is. Can I not it's run out while he's looking? In the credenza drawer. So, did Jake try to blackmail you after he found your journal at the diner? Excellent deduction, my dear Drew. That's why I sent Mitch after Jake, to rough him up a bit. Unfortunately for Jake and Mitch, the roughing up got a bit Why are we just standing hand. here? No journal. I've been a very patient man and I need my journal. Tell me where it is. <sighs> it's behind the mirror. <laughs> Who are you exactly if you're not a detective? Just a businessman, albeit an unconventional one. A businessman who deals in top secret information that certain governments and other parties are interested in. No journal, Nancy. You've tried my patience long enough. You leave me no choice but to find the journal on my own. No! Ah! Ouch. What am I supposed to do there? But stop I tried. I tried to run Detective out. Detective Nancy, where's my journal? It's in the entrance, behind the mirror. 
So like, Who where do I, are where, exactly where do I go? If you're not a detective. Just a businessman, albeit an unconventional one. A businessman who deals in top secret information that certain governments and other parties are interested in. No journal, Nancy. I'm going to give you another chance. Tell me where my journal is. It's in the entrance behind the tapestry. What's the combination? Hmm. Sigma Phi Kappa Delta. It's not in here, and I'm tired of these tricks you're playing. Where's my journal? You've tried my patience long enough. You leave me no choice but to find the journal on my own. No. Ah! Hmm. Hmm. Let's stop with this delaying tactic, Detective Nancy. Where's my journal? It's in the entrance behind the tapestry. What's the combination? Delta, 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 Delta. Oh, wrong. That's not it, Nancy. Kappa Lambda, Kappa Sigma. You're trying my patience, Detective Drew. What's the combination? Zeta, Moo, Moo, Pi. <laughs> moo, Moo, Pi. Nancy Drew! What? I'm sure the police will be happy to transfer you to another set of bars. So long, Detective What do you do with this gun? Hello, prisoner number 4321A. Dear Dad, case closed. Yay! Mitch Dillon and his boss, formerly known as Detective Beach, are on their way to prison. The police still don't know his real identity, but his trade in top secret information has been stopped thanks to Aunt Eloise's burglar proof safe. <laughs> Daryl has confessed to selling information about his father's military projects. Despite the damage this has caused Gray Enterprises, Daryl's father has forgiven him. Wow. Connie returned her trophy, but the judo club refused to take it and is opening their competitions to win the next year. Hulk agreed to pay for the damages to the pharmacy. And Hal has gotten his scholarships. And I'm headed to the beach, where the only cover I'm going to go under is a beach blanket. See you <laughs> soon, Nancy. Yay, we finally did it. Oh, let's see. I don't even remember. Corn dogs. I don't know. Secrets can kill awards. Ned Defender rebuffing each amorous attempt by Daryl. Yeah, there was one where we didn't say anything. Easter egg confidential. Pop prankster grape grape orange cool. I didn't get that one. Barnacle for reaching the last level of barnacle blast. Burp for your love of soft drinks. I wonder how many soft drinks you have to get to drink to do that. I got two. Money Grubber for finding all those shiny quarters. Oh, so I I thought that was like for hints or something, but that's actually because there were several that I just passed over because I had plenty of quarters. Jukebox jiving for playing every song. Q for following up on every lead. Jacques for confronting all those Weasley suspects. All right, to the credits. Always wanted to visit Japan from the exotic food and wild fashion in the cities to the nature and tradition in the smaller towns I know there's going to be a ton to see and do as a thank you for all of my hard detective work PG Krollmeister has reserved a room for me at one of the area's best ryokans or traditional inns it'll be nice to finally take a break from solving mysteries and to spend a few weeks without danger and dark secrets hiding around every corner I've already heard that the Ryokan I'm staying in has quite a reputation. I'm not sure exactly for what, though. Well, I'll find that out soon enough. Ah! 
<laughs> Nancy. Join me in my next adventure, Shadow at the Water's Edge. That's cool. I like how they did a, a little preview of the next one. Or the one that they're working on anyway. That's that's pretty cool. We did it. This is like getting ready to start a new a new series here. Stay tuned for dangers case number two. This is the next one that we have to play. Not only did a real live TV actress call me in on this case, but I got to go to New York City and hang out on the set of a daytime TV show. Someone had been sending it star Rick Arden death threats and weird gifts. It was my job to find out who and why. As if living in the Big Apple wasn't exciting enough, I got to mingle with actors, agents, producers. I even saved Rick Arlen's life. Of course, I had to save my own life once or twice, too. Show business is definitely not for the faint of heart. Now, this will be the next one that we do. I'm not sure when we'll come back to that one, but we will definitely be coming back to it soon. Like I said, there's somewhere between like 35 and 40 of these games out right now. So we've definitely got some content here that we can put, put together, put out. Anyhow, this was really fun for my first Nancy Drew game, and especially this being an older game. Of course, this is a remastered version, but it's still an older, older game, a game from the 90s. I really enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Maybe I could go up to doing the, um, not the junior detective, but the, maybe the senior detective mode next time. Especially now that I kind of know what I'm looking for, some of the achievements that we can get. But I had a great time playing this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks so much for hanging around. I appreciate it. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Either way, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Bye.